Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Melissa D'Agostino, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I am uh, one of the principals of Highball TV, that is the company that is bringing the drawer boy to everyone around the world by our <laughs> streaming site. And uh, are happy to be presenting it here as well for all of you. Before we begin, um, I want to acknowledge that the territory that we're on right now has been the site of human activity for over 15,000 years. And I want to thank the uh, keepers of this land, um, the Anishinaabe, the Iroquois Haudenosaunee, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and the Huron-Wendat. Uh, we are privileged and grateful to live, meet, and work on these lands. And we acknowledge that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, as I said, we are thrilled to be bringing uh, this film to you, to Toronto, we're bringing it to Calgary, it's going to be uh, around the globe on our streaming site, um, because the play that it's based on uh, has had that kind of impact as well, and, um, and we, we feel so strongly about this film, it's such a beautiful adaptation of uh, Michael Healy's play. And um, I'm really pleased that this evening we have a lot of people here who are a part of the film, a lot of people here who made the film possible through, uh, through all sorts of means. And we also have a lot of people here tonight who are part of the legacy of the play, The Drawer Boy, who played various parts, who directed productions. And um, that means a lot to us because this film is an extension of that legacy and uh, being able to stream it uh, to audiences around the globe is an extension of that. And uh, so thank you all for being here. You all look fabulous. Uh, we can't wait for you to see the film. Afterward, we're gonna do a brief Q&A and then we're gonna have a reception. We hope that you will stick around and join us. Um, please enjoy, thanks. The only thing that makes Angus different is he doesn't remember from one minute to the next. Let's go. All I know is right now. Did you ever fight in a war? Fought the Nazis, volunteered. That's my wife, damn it, I wanna see her! I would love to welcome to the stage the directors of The Drawer Boy, Arturo Perez Torres and Aviva Armour Ostrov. <laughs> and uh, I think they're going to invite up some other folks, so I'll let them do that. Thanks for coming. <laughs> We'd like to invite the cast up, Richard and Stu. Yeah. And yeah. 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 If you have any questions for the art director, you can ask Joanne. If you have any direction uh, questions for the composer, you can ask Bob. And there's a couple of other actors hiding in the audience, so if you have questions for them, please ask. Awesome. Welcome, everyone, and congratulations. Uh, I'd love to start things off and, uh, and ask Aviva and Arturo. So I think it's such a beautiful, um, it's beautiful that this was a film you made together, because I know, Aviva, you come from theater. You still you come and you exist in theater. Uh, and uh, Arturo, you make documentaries, and it's such a fitting, I think, piece. Uh, to bring together those two worlds. So maybe you could talk a bit about the genesis of the project and what inspired you to make it. Thank you. Um, we wanted to make a film together. We wanted to make a feature together. And we asked Facebook, what Canadian play would you like to see made into a film? <laughs> and the drawer boy got a lot of votes. Um, and then Arturo was particularly drawn to the piece. I had seen it in 1999 at the at Pass Mariah, the original production, and it was very moving. I remember exactly where I was sitting and how I felt watching it. Um, so I already knew and loved the piece, and then Arturo, who is unfamiliar with it, I'll let you talk about why you liked it. Um, well, when I first saw it, I identified myself as a documentary filmmaker, mainly with uh, Miles, the character Miles. Mm -hmm. um, I think what he does, he's an actor that goes into the farm, but the job he does is more of a documentarian or a journalist. And he's faced with all those dilemmas that <coughs> as a documentary filmmaker, you face is what is public, what's private, you know, and uh, what's true, what's not true. So all the decisions you have to make and the, the concept, the themes of the play that were 
with repetition, you create a new reality, and all those things were fascinating for me, so I was, it was sold. There was like three finalists in the poll that we conducted, <laughs> and by far I was very convinced that this was the one. Well, we'll all want to know later what the other two were and <laughs> when you're making them. Um, great, thank you. Um, and for the actors, I'd love to just, I know you all come from theater as well, and so perhaps you, I'm sure you knew about the play, maybe you saw it, you had your own relationship to it, and did that uh, inform your process at all, or did you look at it really as these characters you were playing and step into it, uh, if any of you want to chat about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I saw the original production of Pass uh and it, it was amazing uh, for those who saw it, I'm sure. Well, everyone has their own personal reaction. Um, I can't remember your question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did it inform your process? Did knowing about the play inform your process, or did you sort of start fresh? No, no. I think I started fresh because it was so long ago, and um, the adaptation of of the play had its own <coughs> differences. I think, mm. and um, no, I I I, I, I kind of started fresh like. I don't know, when I do plays or whatever, it always feels like the new and fresh, and I, I, I didn't, I just started working on it. That was it. Awesome. Um, uh, I, uh, um, I, I never saw the play, and, uh, but of course I knew everybody who was involved. I, you know, I worked with Miles as a director and as an actor, and I worked with David Fox, and, Michael Healy, and so I knew them all, and I, I uh, but I'd never seen the play, but somewhere I, I guess I had sort of a, a, a mythic impression of it. Mm -hmm. And um, that proved to, for me both to be something, a hurdle that I had to get past, but also something positive to shoot for. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, quite frankly, I, I was sort of very fearful uh, of it, um, and fearful that I would kind of muck it up and, and just be cheesy, you know? And uh, so that was, you know, that, that just proved to be a challenge, I guess, that I had to kind of uh, figure out and with great, you know, sort of compassion and help. Um, yeah, but that was, that was it for me. Mm. And, uh, you know, I have great respect for everybody who had done it before, so. Thank you. I'm going to open up. Jacob, Jacob, did you want to say anything about that? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I never saw the play. Never read the play. Um, I still haven't read the play. Uh, <laughs> it's like a real dramatic reaction. <laughs> I, I didn't have interest in the, in, uh, in the original source material. I didn't feel like. Uh, I wanted to have that influence. I didn't want to know the mm -hmm. stage directions. I didn't. I just wanted to uh, come at it fresh, like like what Clark can say in here. Um, and I wanted I wanted to change the lines on set um, while we were shooting. I I didn't want to have any sort of uh, allegiance to this sort of biblical text that that uh, had all of this history. I want. I just wanted to be able to. Approach it new. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We're going to open it up for a few questions to the audience. Any questions hanging out in the audience? Anyone? Yeah, right there. Uh, how long was the shoot and where did you shoot? How long was the shoot and where did you shoot? Thank you. We shot just outside of Blythe. We shot for three weeks. So five days on, two days off. So 15 days. And we shot in Janet Amos and Ted Johns's home. That's their farm. And they are original members of the farm show. So the actors that you saw on screen, they were real people at one point. Paul Thompson plays himself. The guy that played the director is the director of the farm show. And yeah, we stayed in their house and we, we shot in their house. Very cool. Thank you for your question. Other questions? Yeah, right here. Uh, I saw that additional text was from the farm show. Can you talk about how you decided to add that in? And that's it. Great. 
Great, so a question about the additional text added from the farm show and why I decided to do that. Do you want to go? Uh, sure. We wanted to add another scene to kind of like add more dimension to the film as opposed to just three actors. So we decided in the actual play they talk about it, but you never see it. So we decided to bring it to truth, to reality. Um, I saw the Clinton special and it was like a given. You know, you don't have to write that. So it was just verbatim. Can you tell me what the Clinton special is? The Clinton special is a documentary by Michael and Dachi made about the farm show. So he shot that like two years after the farm show experience happened. And it's available, it's a very 45 minute, maybe 50 minute documentary about the farm show. So you have the original members of the farm show basically reading and rehearsing what you saw. So it was there. We just had to kind of like recreate it. The dialogue is verbatim, just chunks of it, what uh, Soshi and Heidi wrote, uh, read. And yeah, that's it. Cool. Thanks for your question. We have time for one more, yeah. What was the name of the poem that was never returned to the university? It's by Gerard Manley Hopkins, and it's called The Wedding... Uh, the Wedding March. The Wedding March. The wedding March. Yeah. Yeah. March. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for your question. I just wanted to say yeah, one thing. Yeah, of course, Richard. Um, Please. Paul Thompson can't be with us tonight, but he was sort of instrumental, obviously, in the source material. Uh, working with the actors and doing the farm show. And he was also a great facilitator in um, opening doors for us to do this film in the Blythe area. Um, maybe you could speak just a bit to that because he, he really was, you know, Paul, he just sort of opens doors and connects people. So maybe you could speak to that. Sure. We talked to Paul and Bobby Naismith. Are you still here, Bobby? Yeah, there he is. Um, and the two of them were instrumental. They they took us around to the area and basically Paul just like went into farms and was like, hey, because we, we had to get a dairy that could pass for a 1972 dairy and wasn't too high tech. So he hooked us up with a couple of farmers and he really was cold calling. Like he knew a lot of people in the area, so we had connections that way, but the farm was a dead cold call. <laughs> we, he, we found some orange men for a while. We were like sitting in the orange men's kitchen. And then Richard went and stayed with the this dairy, with the Verners, Henry and Janet Verner. And that was all due to Paul and hooking up with Ted and Janet Amos with the house. He kind of nudged them into like, come on, let them do it. Um, so yeah, he was definitely instrumental along with with Bobby there. So mm. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks and thanks for and now Richard. Um, thank you all so much. Um, that that sort of wraps up the Q and A. But there's plenty of time to to speak with them and speak with each other about the film. Um, what I'm going to ask is that um, uh, all of the cast and crew go out this door, and everyone else go out that door. <coughs> it's possible. Uh, that would be great. So we can do a little photo up. Um, I want to thank all of you so, so much for your yeah. wonderful, beautiful work. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, There's a cheese making company called Montfort. Mm. They're out of Stratford. And I called them and I said, We made this play, and it's dairy farmers, and it's near Stratford. And they gave us all this incredible cheese. Oh, so please come please and eat, eat it. it. Yeah. Yeah, please come and eat some cheese. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you out there. Thank you. Thank you.